So in this problem, you guys, what I would do, there's two ways you can do this problem. You can multiply x squared times x and x squared times 2. Or you can multiply x minus 2 times x plus 1. Do that FOIL. Okay, it's just a matter, you're going to have to FOIL sometime. It's just a matter when you want to FOIL. So, um, I'll do this first, okay? So that means I'm going to get x to the third minus 2x squared. Now, I have x to the third, so now I'm going to FOIL x to the third times x and then x to the third times 1. So x to the third times x is x to the fourth. x to the third times 1 is x to the third. Then negative 2x squared times x is negative 2x to the third. Negative 2x squared times 1 is negative 2x, I'm sorry, yeah, is negative 2x squared. I can combine these two terms. So my final answer is x to the fourth minus x to the third minus 2x squared. And then that's your answer. How'd you guys do? Did you do good or did you, or are you thinking you made that look too simple? Like I hate you, Miss Flurry. It's okay. Okay. So this is a factor, and I asked you to find the remaining factors. And we yesterday when we did this, what you have to do is you have to use synthetic division. You guys, if this is positive 3 and synthetic division, it would be? Negative. So I'm going to put negative 3 here. And then I'm just going to take the coefficients. I have an x cubed term, so that's 2. I do have an x. Um, um, I have a quadratic term, so negative 5. I have a linear term, and then I have a constant term. Now I'm going to bring down the 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 5 and negative 6 is negative 11. Negative 3 times negative 11 is positive 33. Negative 28 plus 3 plus 33 is um, 5. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And I get a 0. So that's perfect, right? If it's a factor, that should have been a remainder of 0. If it wasn't a factor, we would have had a remainder. We, we would have had a number there. Now, what does this become? 2x squared minus 11x plus 5. So to factor those, you're going to multiply a times b, I mean a times c. So 2 times 5 is 10. And I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them, I get 10. When I add them, I get negative 11. So since um, this number is positive, this number is negative, that means they both need to be negative. Those are the only two factors. Which one adds up to negative 11? This one right here. Because A is not 1, you guys, we're going to factor by grouping. So this is goes back to our chapter 4, okay? So 2x squared minus x minus 10x plus 5. Now remember what I said, factor by grouping, correct? Parentheses around these two, parentheses around these two. This is a good, this is a really good one before example, before number problem number three, because problem number three you have to factor by grouping. Now what do they have in common? 2x squared and x. Okay, that's our GCF. So now what's left inside the parentheses? 2x minus 1. We took the x out, so the squared goes away. Okay. Now, what does negative 10x and 5 have in common? A 5. Do you remember what I said? If this term is negative, you have to pull the negative out. So I'm going to pull out a negative 5. 
So what is negative 10x divided by negative 5? 2x. And then what is 5 divided by negative 5? Look, guys. These match, right? In factoring by grouping, we always want those to match. So my final answer, final answer is x minus 5, and then that parenthesis, 2x minus 1. Those are the remaining factors. Okay, so when you looked at this problem, how many of you said, I'm going to wait until she does it for us? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. You guys at home, how many of you thought, I'm not doing that problem? You probably don't even know that problem exists on the Schoology. Okay, so when you look at this problem, it's going to be a factor by grouping. So... What we're going to do is we're going to look at the first three terms, and then we're going to look at the second three terms. So we are going to group the first three terms together. Then we're going to group the last three terms to go together. Now, how did I know to do that? Well, there were six terms. And you, you either have to know, you either have to study something or like do synthetic division, find that thing, find a, a factor. But if there's six terms, usually what you can do is you can factor by grouping. So we're going to look at the first three terms. Does the first three terms have anything in common? They have A's. Do they have anything else in common? A five. Do, how many A's do they have in common? One, so we're going to pull out 5a. And then we're left with a squared minus 6a plus 8, right? Let's just make sure that Ms. Flurry actually did that correctly. 5a times a squared is 5a to the third. 5a times negative 6a is negative 30a squared. Whew. 5a times 8 is 48. Ooh, Miss Flurry did a pretty good job on that one. Okay. Now let's look at the second one. The second three. Do they have anything in common? Yes. What do they have in common? A 2. I want you to know that when I looked at this problem, I thought they had an A also, but they don't have an A. They only have a B. I really thought it was an A also, but it is a, just a B. So what's left? I took 2B away from 2A, 2A squared B, so I'm going to be left with A squared. A squared. 12AB divided by 2B is negative 6A. 16B divided by 2B is? Oh, it is 16. Did I say 16B squared by accident? 16B divided by 2B is 8. Look at that, you guys. Isn't that nice? This and this match. Perfect. So 5A and 2B, that's my first factor. But that's a quadratic. So we need to see if we can factor that. Okay, we're not. We're done with 5a plus 2b. We don't need to do anything else with 5a plus 2b because that um, that's already factored. They don't have anything in common. But let's see if we can factor a squared minus 6a plus 8. So I'm looking for two numbers. When you multiply, you get 8. When you add them, you get negative 6. Right. So it'd be 1 and negative 8, 2 and negative 4. That's your term. So I'm going to have a plus 2, a. Well, 
Yep, you're right. Thank you. Just so you know, guys at home, I just got spanked, okay? So, I did. You guys, you were right. They were both supposed to be negative. I did it wrong. There we go. Now I know how you guys feel when I when I um when you feel the wrath of me. And that's our final answer. Sometimes the longest problems actually turn out to so when you do this, you guys think, okay, there's six of them. I need to factor by grouping. Okay?